Welcome back to the show, everybody. Check out this headline today. Coinbase files amicus for amicus brief status to be able to support Ripple and XRP. And the Ripple allies continue to line up, ladies and gentlemen. Somebody roll that beautiful intro. Digital Perspectives with Brad Kimes. Come on in. Welcome back to the show, everybody. You can, I've done this before. Hang in there. $1.06 trillion market cap for cryptocurrency. Bitcoin, 20400 plus. Ethereum, over 1500 bucks this morning. XRP is $0.45. Cents. We're off by 3.3% on the seven-day. Ladies and gentlemen, link to... Or I'm sorry, uphold, excuse me, I meant to say, where you can get 25% APY while staking. But I do want to let you know as well that you can absolutely use your uphold wallet to buy link to products. By the way, look how quick they're going. PolySign, gone right now. Acorns, gone. You never know when it's going to happen. And someday soon, Ripple is planning some kind of a public exit after this case, and it will be gone. Uphold was just announcing how they're doing every, anything to anything and making their self the one-stop, uh, all-in-one stop for uh, anything you want to purchase by from fungible assets from your portfolio to spending for everyday goods. It's remarkable. Check out the links for Uphold, 0% commissions, 25% APY, and check out Link22. I'm telling you, it's just remarkable the things that are happening in this time. This is pretty remarkable as well, ladies and gentlemen. Two massive transactions carrying 25 million and 29.5 million XRP were sent to Bitstamp by wallets tagged by Whale Alert. And obviously unknown where these transactions are going and what they're really being used for. But the present exchange rate put that transaction, those transactions rather, at $14.5 million. How about that? 54 million XRP. Wonder what happened to it. You know, again, I remind people, Ripple are buying back off the secondary market, which is where you and I get XRP, which is a lot less these days than where we used to be able to get it. Right, I'm just saying. I hope we see XRP relisted on all the exchanges in the world. That's what I hope. Uh, this here, may I don't know about you, but this this causes this causes me to take pause right here. YouTube has announced a partnership with World Health Organization to con control the content that is viewed and censored through a partnership with Google to address the spread of misinformation. But one has to wonder if the WHO may be helping with some of that. I, I don't know. You know, <laughs> I digress. Elon's acquisition of Twitter is about payments. This says Dr. Martin Heisboik, who is the research and development guy for Uphold, ladies and gentlemen. PayPal tries to disintermediate ACH payment system 20 plus years ago. Now it's finishing the job using internet native payment protocols along with Jack Dorsey and a few new faces from crypto, including CZ Binance. We know CZ was in on this Twitter deal to the tune of $500 million. Caitlin Long has said as much, and I have too. It appears to me that the banking system is about to have one of the biggest, biggest disintermediations happen right in front of its face using the social media platform Twitter. Go Elon. That's how you get the ball rolling. U.S. I keep covering this. U.S. Tether bank fraud investigation has now changed hands within the Department of Justice. Getting spooky out there, says Gold Telegraph. Hey, look, really quickly. I, I, I just want to say this. Um... In, you know, full disclosure, full reporting here, um, Tether has said that, listen, these claims are basically, and I'm paraphrasing, erroneous. There's a falsity from Bloomberg reporting is what Tether is claiming. However, in full disclosure of reporting, that uh, that report that is going to show us the reserves coming from Tether is still four to five years in the in the waiting here. So, uh 
show up with that report tether let's see the reserves let's see the holdings let's get really transparent and maybe a lot of this talk goes away right i think that's the quickest way to do it just like satoshi unlock the wallet if you're a satoshi that'll show us okay this is a list and things are getting long and buckle up because we got a lot to go over here and we're going to do it as quickly as possible for you and we cannot touch every single amazing thing but we're going to touch it starting right here we know that john deaton filed his amicus brief i covered that yesterday's afternoon video it is straight fire it is just one knockout punch after another shout out to john deaton for all he does for all of us window chamber chamber of digital commerce i remit tap jets uh spend the bits i can blockchain association which was another amazing amicus brief filing there shout out to jake travinsky uh john deaton obviously straight fire coinbase which we're about to take a look at ladies and gentlemen yes that's right coinbase has filed in support of ripple and xrp and by the way so has the crypto council for innovation embrace yourself for this one val hill capital that's right my friend shout out to jimmy v and scott the whole team over there at val hill i'm talking about showing up baby that's what they've done yeah gary gensler are you there sec are you counting let's get started ladies and gentlemen there are some things we need to be aware of we know john deaton uh put his brief out and it is absolutely not pulling any punches is right shout out to eleanor Terrett for that ripple's allies are expanding coinbase files the amicus brief but before we do let's take a look at this one the from cci here the crypto council uh uh innovation group i think is what it is yeah for innovation it's a global alliance of industry leaders and the irony is at its finest says eleanor Terrett, because jay clayton and bill hinman are now inadvertently supporting ripple through their associations with electric capital and a16 which are both members of the crypto council you can't make it up ladies and gentlemen and here is the actual letter uh for filing for the brief asking for permission to file for the brief what i want to bring you to though how however is this because I'll read this part right here. CCI respectfully requests that the court exercise its discretion to grant leave for uh, to file the proposed briefs because CCI has a unique perspective to share with the court that will aid the court in resolving the cross motions for summary judgment. CCI is an alliance for crypto industry leaders with mission to communicate the opportunities presented by crypto now i want to look there's a lot more right but i just want to give you that and then i want to take you here so now let's go over to this right because this is the part that i want to really bring you to and i believe it was uh page 24 and 25 let me get to this very quickly i'm pretty sure i can do it very quickly we're doing this this is in real time everyone <laughs> All right, let's go right here. And just a little further here, I want to get you to these parts. Look, the whole thing's incredible, but what I want to do is bring you to something that we have uh, talked about on this channel here. And basically, it is, in fact... I believe right here it says is the second point that it's making about being able to have access and the freedom to use xrp right because it is a utility and it's a digital asset not a security certainly not an investment contract it says here even if the uh yes this is the section i believe right here yeah one sec yes it is okay sorry 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 here we go so second even if the open questions regarding the registration of digital asset securities are resolved it is not apparent how traditional securities intermediaries such as broker dealers and national securities exchanges would be able to facilitate digital asset transactions under the existing securities regulatory framework you hear what you hear what's going on there <laughs> you hear what's going on there i hear what's going on there what i hear in there is exactly what we reported on a while ago when the sec voted to use distributed ledger technology if you remember 
to increase settlement time to T plus zero from T plus two. And it goes on to talk about that. Securities market infrastructure does not support blockchain transactions, which are a significant source of utility for XRP and other digital assets. Blockchains can provide for near instant settlement for peer-to-peer transactions as opposed to the T plus two settlement cycle commonly associated with securities. CCI is making the argument Argument here, ladies and gentlemen, at XRP, if the infrastructure was together with the uh, national securities exchanges to settle all the derivatives, then you could use XRP to settle it. That's the point they're making. Certainly the point I'm getting from it. Initiate cross-border transactions with a minimal time and resource cost. This comes back to the CFPB that you could wire money, right? The Consumer Financial Protection Bureau saying that you could send money through Swift Go or Ripple and XRP, a virtual currency. Oh, this is getting interesting, ladies and gentlemen. And to know that this association, this in, this group, CCI is tied back to entities that William Hinman and Jay Clayton are involved in. (laughs) Oh, brother. If digital assets are not permitted to trade on the blockchain, these benefits cannot be realized. Moreover, broker dealers and national securities exchanges are subject to separate regulatory requirements that are not compatible with transacting in digital assets like XRP. You would lose the whole advantage of being able to settle the entire derivatives market of hundreds of trillions of dollars, if not quadrillion or more, (laughs) if you're able to figure this out, Judge. This means that even if Ripple could comply with the requirements for registration of XRP on a national securities exchange, it may not be possible to trade XRP or other digital assets alongside traditional securities. The existing securities trading and market structure simply was not created with digital assets in mind. In mind, traditional securities trading operates through a system of clearing agencies, exchanges, broker dealers, while blockchain transactions require none of this infrastructure. In fact, part of the inherent utility of XRP and other digital assets is their ability to interface with a blockchain without a third party. Hmm. You know, when I <laughs> I don't know what you're getting out of this, ladies and gentlemen, but I can tell you what the hell I'm getting out of it here. Is they're making a play to settle the entire derivatives market back end with XRP here if they get this right on the ruling. That's what I see. Therefore, it is unclear how blockchains and blockchain-based assets would be incorporated into the national market system. This is the point they're making, which includes, for example, facilities to enable custody, clearance, settlement, establishment, national best bid offer, dissemination of consolidated quotations, configuration of trading, reporting. I have said this and said this and said this. I'm telling you, you know, uh, between this ruling of this case and the United States Treasury and FSOC, I think we're going to see this get done the way it needs to, and then Congress soon to follow. And remember, as we move through all of this information in the time of this case developing and it's meeting its end and all of the rest of it, I just want to remind everybody that whether you have a lame duck president or a lame duck Congress, EPSOC is a prudential regulator and they can make rules and regulation without Congress's approval. Thought you should know. Let's get this up here fixed. This is a nice reminder. Back in June 6th of 2018, documenting Ripple. Shout out to them. For example, June 6th, 2018, then SEC Chairman Jay Clayton, who is now ironically indirectly supporting Ripple through CCI and the two organizations that are in CCI, Cryptocurrencies like XRP as a replacement for traditional currencies in an interview with CNBC, he said this. Cryptocurrencies, these are replacement for sovereign currencies, replace the dollar, the euro, the yen with Bitcoin. That type of currency is not a security. A token, a digital asset where I give you my money and you go off and make a venture and in return for giving you my money, I say you can get a return. That is a security and we regulate that. 
Well, that isn't exactly how XRP works. The XRP is like the first half. It is a complement, a bridge currency to exchange into anything that you may want to have on the other end. And there we have the argument about the derivatives market from CCI as well. This is getting interesting, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, boy. Now let's get to this because we know that the Crypto Council for Innovation required the permission to file amicus brief, and that is powerful. But guess what? We also have uh, Coinbase now, ladies and gentlemen. And as I said the other day when Brian Armstrong was talking about kumbaya around the fire, I was like, hey, stop telling us to not be tribal because we're not being tribal. We're being picked on. We're defending ourselves. And now we understand exactly what Coinbase was talking about, because Coinbase and Brian Armstrong were talking about the idea of filing an amicus brief before actually doing it. And that's what they've done now. Well, heck, if you're going to come out in opposition to the SEC here, you might as well relist XRP, don't you think? That's exactly what I think. You tell them, Jeremy Hogan. That's exactly what I said the other day, too. You don't want to practice tribalism. You want to talk down tribalism. Well, that's fine. You can talk down tribalism, but you got to step up. And that's exactly what Coinbase has done here. As the largest cryptocurrency trading platform in the United States by trading volume, Coinbase has a unique perspective on the issue at stake in this matter. Specifically, after this action was filed, multiple U.S. exchanges delisted XRP, causing its market value to, to, to decline by $15 billion, resulting in significant losses to Coinbase's customers customers. Coinbase has formally petitioned the SEC to engage in rulemaking for this U.S. digital asset industry so that market participants can have a better idea of what to expect in the future and avoid losses such as those that occurred in this matter. In the absence of regulatory framework governing digital assets, Coinbase believes that parties like Ripple must be permitted to pursue fair notice defenses in matters where they are facing surprise enforcement actions like this one. We respectfully ask the re or request that the court allow Coinbase to file the attached amicus brief, consider its position on significant legal issues at stake in this matter, which affect Coinbase and its millions of customers. Well, I tell you, that's where we are. And we will get deeper into the brief in the next video with all the other news we got going on this morning. But today... That's where we are on this day, ladies and gentlemen, and what a day it has been the last 24 hours and finding out that we have now 10 amicus brief or people or companies, entities filing or have been accepted already now uh, and on their way to being accepted into as friends of the court and all of which are in support of the use of Ripple and XRP. Pretty pretty remarkable not financial advice from me or anyone else i just bought xrp yesterday and i might be buying some again today don't take my advice though it's not advice it's just my digital perspectives i'll catch all of you on the next one